We don't have to argue with anybody. We don't have to curse and go around acting bad with our words. We don't need any bricks and bubbles. We don't need any Molotov cocktails. We just need to go around to these stores and to these massive industries in our country say God sent us by here to say to you that you're not treating his children right and we come by here to ask you to make the first item on your agenda fair treatment where God's children are concerned now if you're not prepared to do that we do have an agenda that we must follow and our agenda calls for withdrawing economic support from you. So as a result of this, we're asking you tonight to go out and tell your neighbors not to buy Coca-Cola in Memphis.
need to be there. If it means leaving work, if it means leaving school, be there. Be concerned about your brother. You may not be on track. But either we go up together or we go down together. Let us develop a kind of dangerous unselfishness. self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But if a man doesn't have a job or an income, he has neither life nor liberty and the possibility for the pursuit of happiness. He merely exists. We spend $322,000 for each enemy we kill in Vietnam, while we spend in the so-called war on poverty in America only about $53 for each person classified as poor. The promises of the great society have been shut down on the battlefield of Vietnam making the poor, white and Negro, bear the heaviest burdens, both at the front and at home. The other thing I want you to understand is this, that it didn't cost the nation one penny to integrate lunch counters. It didn't cost the nation one penny to guarantee the right to vote. But now we are dealing with issues that cannot be solved without the nation spending billions of dollars and undergoing a radical redistribution of economic power. Yes, yes. All labor has dignity. Yes. But you are doing another thing. You are reminding not only Memphis, but you are reminding the nation that it is a crime for people to live in this rich nation and receive starvation wages. America's opportunity to help bridge the gulf between the haves and the have-nots. And the question is whether America will do it. There's nothing new about poverty. What is new is that we now have the techniques and the resources to get rid of poverty. And the real question is whether we have the will at the very same time that America refused to give the Negro any land, through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money teach them how to fall. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, 
today many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to fall, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And this is what we are faced with, and this is a reality. Now, when we come to Washington in this campaign, we're coming to get our check. here tonight and plead with you. Believe in yourself and believe that you're somebody. As I said to the group last night, nobody else can do this for us. No document can do this for us. No Lincolnian Emancipation Proclamation can do this for us. No Kennesonian or Johnsonian Civil Rights Bill can do this for us. If the Negro is to be free, he must move down into the inner resources of his own soul and sign with a pen and ink of self-assertive manhood his own emancipation proclamation. Take your manhood. Be proud of our heritage. As somebody said earlier tonight, we don't have anything to be ashamed of. Somebody told a lie one day. They couched it in language. They made everything black, ugly, and evil. Look in your dictionary and see the synonyms of the word black. It's always something degrading and low and sinister. Look at the word white. It's always something pure. Ah. But I want to get the language right tonight. to get the language so right that everybody here will cry out, yes, I'm black, I'm proud of it, I'm 